Thank you. Well, happy Sunday morning to you. Feliz Domingo por la mañana, Pastor Jose and Patricia. We want to welcome you to New Beginnings Church of the Big Band. Amen. If you don't have a church, you can come be with us. Amen. We'll take you as a church you can call home. Amen. Where we honor God, love family, serve others, and we pursue excellence. And we have a passion for God and a passion for souls. You know, we have passions for a whole lot of things, especially uh, cowboys <laughs> and football. But we got to have a passion for God. Amen. And we got to have passion for souls. And uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he talks to us. He says, the old is out, the new is in. So I'm a child of God. And you know what? Not only that, he, I'm a minister of reconciliation, bringing people to Christ. You know, we always think about pastor doing it or brother of holy so-and-so. You know, but it's you, every one of us. He puts you here for a reason. And the only reason you're here is because he wants us to line up with his word, come to him, and and uh, and and. and for us to go and fulfill whatever mission he's called us to do. So you have a mission. If nobody ever told you, now you know. You have a call in your life. And that call is to serve him. And you are called to be ministers of reconciliation. You're called to be his ambassador. What's ambassador do? You're his mouthpiece. You're, his, you're the word of God going somewhere to happen. You're the closest thing to a Bible some people will ever see or be around or hear. But you have to speak it out. Amen. Whew, man. Old is out. The new is in. Don't let the enemy or people hold things against you and bring up your past. You know what? I'm not a prisoner of my past anymore. I'm prisoner with God. I'm prisoner with, for him on a daily basis. And you need to do the same thing. Amen. So we have a passion for God. And we have a passion for souls. So bienvenidos a la, a, a la iglesia del nuevo comienzo. Where we're... Uh, well, we love God. Amen. Praise God. We want to welcome all our NBC families, all our visitors, and all of you that are joining us by audio and video. All we ask you to do is prepare yourselves to receive. God has something for me. Amen. We're always waiting for a gift, you know, and he's got something for us, but he wants you to receive it. You know, if somebody hands you something, you got to take it. You got to reach out and take it. So I'm reaching out and I'm taking what God has for me. Amen. Even while I'm preaching, thank you, Lord. I receive the word. And I receive it for myself, praise God. God wants to bless you, encourage you, change you, and we want, He wants to correct us. So today we're going to be talking about let God arise in you on a daily basis. So let God arise. That's what the Word of God tells us. And uh, uh, well, we'll get to our text here in a few minutes. But uh, we, need to, we need to let it rise. We let a lot of things rise up in us, especially our temper sometimes. <laughs> we need to let God arise in us. You know, when we line up with Him, He wants us to be at our best, you know, and we want to do our best for Him. Because He arose when God told Him, when His Father told Him to come, He rose and He came and He went and fulfilled His mission. So He wants us to do the same thing, rise up and fulfill what God has for you on a daily basis. But I'm going to let, let Him rise up in me so that I can fulfill what He wants me to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And before we do all that, let's break this declaration together. Grab your sword, grab your Bibles, and let's say it together. Amen. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do today. I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My spirit is receptive. And I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Remember that the battlefield is the mind. And your mind is always thinking. It's going, it's going, it's going. But sometimes we need to... The Bible says, renew your mind with the Word of God. If not, you're going to be thinking, and the enemy is going to use it against you. The world is going to use it against you. And you're going to start thinking like the world. And you're going to start thinking negative. So now i got to renew it to what the Word of God tells me to do. And be positive and not negative. Amen? So we got to renew our minds because that's the battlefield. And that's where the enemy comes. And he tries... He can't make you do anything, but he can put lots of thoughts there for you. And uh, you've got to be able to renew and get it out and clean it out so that I can get directions from God on a daily basis and know what I need to do. Amen. So he can make your things very confusing and very uh, distracting. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. I said all that to say, rest in God's ability to fight your battles. Show the enemy, the accuser of the brethren. The strength in your faith. You're going to show, it's going to show, you know what he wants us to do? He wants us to mature and grow up in the things of God. You know, we got to open the Bible and get in it so we can start learning the word 
and press on with what the word of God tells us to do. So we're going to mature. We're going to mature and grow in the things of God. Otherwise, you don't want to stay uh, a Christian baby all your life, you know. Remember, the enemy is busy and he is, he, uh, he let me see how I want to say this. Uh, us part-time Christians are no match to a full-time devil because he's busy all the time. He knows what he's doing. We need to know what we're doing too. But we need to go to the instruction book, the Bible, basic instruction before you leave earth. Amen. And we we got to get it in us. It says the strength of your faith comes from the amount of trust you place in God's hands, knowing that you can be thankful for God's ability to act in each and every situation that you may face. God is with me. What does his word say? His word says he never leaves you nor forsakes you. So I feel lonely. But Lord, I know you're there. Because your word says you never leave me nor forsake me. And the word says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And whatever you face, you know what? God is going to show up powerful. Amen. Also, what he wants you to do, and we've been talking about this in Bible study on Wednesdays. He wants us to use our authority. You have authority, but you need to use it. Amen. It's his word. We need to get the word, his authority, and use it and speak it out. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There you go. Let God arise. Keep going, Colonel. Put a few up there. I got a few translations that I want to read to you, and they have different um, ways. So I just want to read them to you. King James is first. King James says, Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered, and let them also that hate him flee before him. The Good News translation is, is, is listed as a song of triumph. It says, God arise and scatter his enemies. Those who hate him run away in defeat. Amen. What does he tell us? I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But he says to speak the word and they have to go. Amen. God not giving us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. He says, submit yourself to God. Resist him. And what does he have to do? He has to flee. It didn't say he has to walk or crawl away. He says he has to flee. That means he's, he's got the book. He's got to go. Amen. You know... You got to confess it and get it out every time. Psalms uh, 68.1, New Living Translation says, Rise up, O God, and scatter your enemies. Let those that hate God run for their lives. <laughs> Amen. You got to be there. Otherwise, <laughs> your history. And here's another thing is, the message translation, listen to this, says this. Uh, Psalm 68.1 says, Up with God, down with the enemy. I like that. It says, adversaries, run for the hills. Adversities or adversaries, run for the hills. Let God arise and let you listen. Let your cares, let your worries, let your anxieties, let your problems or your distractions go in Jesus' name. Amen. Let them go. Let them be gone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And he says to cast it on him because he loves us. You know why? Because he has a great mission for you on a daily basis. On a daily basis, I'm going to let him rise up. So he, And he's going to tell me what to do. Amen. And he tells me, you go and you know you can do the, all this thing uh, uh, through him. It, it, uh, you can do all things through Christ and strength. See, that's what I was thinking. I was getting a little tongue-tied here. But anyway, John also, let God invite us that enemies be scattered. Psalm 68 and 1. Keep going. There we go. John 8, 1, 8, 8 uh, 31 and 32 says, The truth is going to set you free. But Jesus said to his Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth is going to make you free. Now we're talking about the word here. Amen. The New King James says that Jesus said unto those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Go to the next one. This is a New Living Translation. So Jesus says to the people, he's, he's talking to us, believers, amen. He says to his people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So no, you know, once in a while you look at different translations, see what they say, but it's going to set you free. 
from all the mindsets, all the distractions, all the things that try to come against you. And the enemy <laughs> is going to use people, the world, to try to distract you and stop you from doing what God wants you to do. He's got great things for you. But the world, people, are going to try to stop you from doing these things. So you got to know this. So that you can set yourself right with Him and let Him rise up and stir yourself up to go and do what God wants you to do on a daily basis. Amen. So let God arise. Again, let God arise and let your cares, your worries, your anxieties, your trouble be gone in Jesus' name. Confessing the word. Confessing faith-filled words. If you're confessing the word, you're confessing faith-filled words. Those are faith-filled words. Amen. And the truth is going to set you free. So we want to be free. Why? Because he's got things for us to do. So don't never say, God doesn't care about me. God never gives me anything to do. That's when we start letting the world in and we're distracted. And we start feeling lonely and we feel like we're nobody. And the enemy is the enemy's going to see to it and the world's going to see to it that they accommodate you. But you are strong and you're a champ. You're, you're a champion. You're an overcomer for God. See yourself that way. See yourself the way He sees you. And see, He sees you great. And He sees you fulfilling what He wants you to do. And He sees you qualified to do what He wants you to do. Okay? The world and others don't see you this way. They've always put you down. And you're never qualified to do anything God wants you to do. And God will never pick me. But that's the way the enemy wants us to think. So let go and let God. Keep going. Let go and let God. Amen. And he instructs us to let go of things, circumstances, distractions in our life that are out of our control. Those keeps us from fulfilling God, what God has for us. You cannot fly, uh, fight a spiritual battle with your physical strength. And that's what we need to remember this. We're fighting a spiritual battle. And what do we need? We need the Word of God to overcome the spiritual battle. Otherwise, you try to fight it with the physical body. And it's not going to happen. You're defeated already. Amen. But maturity, you're going to grow in the things of God. And as you grow, you know, I've got to use the Word of God. When you use the Word of God, you're using God's authority. And He's given us authority. Amen. So you lose, but instead, trust and lean on God's mighty strength, His power, His force. It's a type of surrender that invites God to come and do what only he can do. Amen. But we got to open up and we got to let him in. Once in a while, we got to open up the word of God and read it and find out what it says and learn from it. Amen. And, and, and you know, it's just not going to jump on you. You got to open it up and read it and study it and meditate on it. Amen. Woo. Yes, amen. <laughs> so let go and let God. There we go. Let go and let God. Lord, empty me of me and fill me with all of you. And you know, here's another thing we got to do. Step off the throne and put God on the throne. Even if you have to do it on a daily basis. Says, Lord, you're the Lord of my life. Amen. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. And I surrender myself to you. If some of you are still running from God, then now's the time. You know, hey, Lord, I've sinned against you. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Get off the throne and put Him on the throne. You know, and if you, the more time you spend away from him, it's easier for you to get back on the throne and start thinking this way. So you gotta get 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 the fellowship in with him and spending time with him, and then put him on the throne. Keep him on the throne. Matthew six thirty three. Seek him first. Amen. Seek him first on a daily basis before you do anything else. And when you open your eyes, thank you, Lord, for waking me up. You got to wake up call. It's time to get busy and start serving him. Amen. Come on now. Woo. Praise God. Magnify God and not your circumstances, not your problems, not your cares, not your worries, not your anxieties, your problems, whatever. You are champions. You're, we're, we're champions in doing this. We magnify the problems first before we magnify our God. We make our, our, our circumstances, our distractions, our problems it's stronger than our God. Well, how, how do we do that? I don't do that. Yes, you do. Because you speak it out. When you speak it out, you're magnifying your problem more than you're magnifying God. You know, we got to speak 
and let our problems know how big our God is. Amen. We got to reverse that. And we can reverse that. Reverse it by confessing the word of God daily. We're God's war warriors, not warriors. <laughs> Some of us are warrior champions, you know. We, that's not good. That's not a good thing. We're warriors for God. Amen. We're soldiers for God. Let's remember that. <laughs> if if uh, it says pray and don't worry, and if you're going to worry, why pray? Give it to him. Cast it on. Leave it there, you know, and don't worry about it. If I give it to him, then he's got it. So don't be going back and taking it back. It says, what are you letting arise in your life on a daily basis? What are your focuses? What are you you're focusing your attention, your words, your energies, your get up and goes, your drive, uh, your thoughts? What, 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 what are you uh, focusing these things on? Are you focusing them on the Word of God? If you are, good for you. But if you're not, you know, we got to get back in line with what the Word of God tells us to do. Amen. You may be hurt now, but guess what? God is restoring me. God is going to restore me. I need to speak the word. You may have lost a job, finances, a loved one, but don't worry. God is your provider. The word says he'll provide all your needs. He'll supply all of our needs. And he will. And you got to, you know, as you grow in him, you're going to trust him and have faith. You know, that fear has got to go. The more you get in, the more work you get in you, the more faith you have. And as you step out, you step out in faith and not fear. He's not giving me a spirit of fear. Amen. I'm a child of God. I'm going to step out in faith on a daily basis. Why? Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I'm going to step out in, in faith. Man, God. When you start giving God glory and letting him rise in your life, you cannot stay defeated. Amen. If you fall, you have a choice. Am I going to stay down or am I going to get up? main thing you want to do is you want to get up. Some of us have been down for too long. We got to get up and press on with God. Did he put you here? He sent you here. And he gave you a mission. But you're still sitting on your behind. <laughs> and it's time to get up and do something about it. Okay, Lord, I'm going to get up. I'm going to do something about it. Yeah. Let's do it. Well, yeah, that's your choice. My choice is to get up, Lord. And I'm going to do this unto you. Amen. So, let's remember this. Don't stay defeated. Your enemies... Will, and your enemies will be scattered. They tremble as you speak his word. Faith-filled words. Amen. They don't want to hear that. You know, when they hear you talk, they're going to hear maturity. They're going to hear you change. Even your people, even your friends, your enemies will see something different about you. Well, we don't want to hang out with you no more. You're different. You're speaking different. You're doing different. And you're not hanging out with us no more. The enemy knows this. Amen. You know, uh, uh, scripture says that the enemy goes about as a born lion seeking who he may devour. How does he know how to devour you? By the words you speak. You're going around being negative. He's going to hang out with you. And guess what? We're opening the door for the enemy to come in. I say, I didn't open the door for you to come in. Yes, you did. How did you do that? The words you spoke. So you know what? If you know it's going to be negative, don't even say it anymore. Man, I used to know all the customers, and I still do. <laughs> but I don't say them anymore. It only gets this far, and I've got a heart there. It says, it's not coming out anymore. I'm not going to say it anymore. If somebody cuss me out, I know to hold myself. And not say it anymore. Why? Because I'm getting down to there and it's, it's negative. You know, if we, if, we, if we say it, and we do sin, you know, even as believers, if we sin, just say, Lord, I'm sorry. I repent. Confess it and press on. Amen? He says he'll forgive and forget. We need to do the same thing. But you know what people do is they hold it against you and they'll bring it back over and over and over. And the enemy is going to be in your mind and you're going to be thinking it. But you know what? Hey, I confess it. He forgave me. He forgot about it. You need to do the same thing. Amen. It's, it's, it's gone. Woo. Hallelujah. Now begin to declare God's goodness in your life. And let God arise so that no one, so that you can uh, move forward. Press on with things of God. I, I like that word. Pressing on. Pressing on with God. Amen. Press on. From victory to, to, from victory, to victory. 
let God arise, have victory in him on a daily basis. Amen. You know, Jesus never lost the battle. And Jesus never lost. So we're on God's winning team. That's you, that's me, that's us. Amen. We're the, we're the body of Christ. Praise God. So let God arise daily. When God arises, two things happen. His enemies have to scatter and his people gather for rest. We come to him for rest. Amen. It says the word lit is used seven times in uh, in our text. Uh, Psalm 68, 1 and 3. Find it, it's on there. Psalm 68. Let God arise and stand up and come uh, on the scene with power and establish his purpose. Amen. It goes like this. It says, uh, Psalm 68, 1 and 3 in the New King James says, Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those, let also who hate him flee before him. As smoke is, smoke is driven out away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let wicked perish in the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice because God's be, because before God, excuse me, before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. Hallelujah. Let is a very powerful word. As a matter of fact, word, uh, let is an action word. It gives God permission. So let go of it totally. Amen. And allows him to speak. Uh, speak out it allows him to speak out it allows him to participate in solving your problem let God arise let his enemy be scattered gives him gives him permission gives him uh, allows him to speak and allows him to participate in solving your problems so Lord go ahead and do what you need to do for me on a daily basis amen but we gotta stay in touch with him we gotta have a relationship that's what it's all about amen we gotta visit with him let is also a power, power a power word. It involves your will and involves your choice and it involves your decision. Amen. So let God arise. You have to make a choice. You have to let uh make a decision. And you gotta let him. Amen. You can't keep him down, you know. You gotta let him out. You gotta let, let God arise. There we go. And then you can see how I uh, underlined every one of them. So let, let, let all these let, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him, uh, him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melted before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad, let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Amen. Ooh, man, that's awesome. That's powerful. Let God arise in our lives daily. Surrender to Him daily. Praise Him daily. Rejoice and be glad daily. He's given us a new day. What's the Bible says? Psalm 118, 24. It says, This is the day I have given you. Rejoice and be glad in it. But you don't know my circumstances. You don't know what problems I have today. You don't know this. Well, if you don't know, why aren't you telling him? And if if you've got him, how come you haven't cast it on him? He says, okay, give it to him. Because I've given him a new day. And he says, every day I want you to rejoice and be glad in it. So we need, we need to be obedient to, to what the Word of God tells us to. Amen. Let God arise daily in your lives set and keep your priorities right matthew 6 33 again seek you first the kingdom of god his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you so i gotta keep him first in my life on a daily basis amen all the time not just sometimes you know <laughs> all the time know that you can do all things through christ you know again the enemy is going to attack the mind and the mind is the battlefield and he's going to Try to disqualify you and put you down on a daily basis, but you got to know this is what the word of God says. So I'm going to wipe out and delete all the negative stuff and know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I means me, and you can put your, your name there. You cross that out and just put your name. Jose can do all things through Christ. Put your name on there. Make it personal for yourself. This is what God wants you to do. 
Know that the greater one is with you. Amen. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Know these things. And, you, and it comes. It, and it's called maturity because you're growing on a daily basis. Just a lot of climbing that, that ladder, you know. One run at a time. One run at a time. Came to, one day at a time. You can't do it from step one to all the way to the top. One step at a time. One day at a time. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and your enemies, again, your distractions, your cares, your problems, have to flee. They have to go. There's no doubt about it. If you're confessing the word of God, the word of God works if you work the word. If you release the word, it has to work. It will work. Amen. James 4, 7 and 8 says this. It says, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he has to flee. We talked about that a few, a few minutes ago. If you submit yourself therefore to God, resist him, or use your authority, he says he has to run away. He has to flee. Flee means run away. Escape. Take off. Fly. Fly. Go. He's got to go. <laughs> but we must stand our grounds and use our authority. Know how valuable you are to God. Know how valuable you are to the body of Christ. We're one part. We're one, it, one part in the body. But still, God has a body, and you're you're one of them. And that's how important it is. You're a, a vital part to the body of Christ. Amen. And guess what? The body of Christ is the church. We're the church, not this room, not this building. We are the part, and we go into the world. And we do God's mission. Amen. Woo. I'm excited. I'm about you. <laughs> uh, Psalms 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Amen. I'm going to be excited regardless of what distractions are coming against me, regardless of what the world is going through. You know, remember in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it talks about in the last days it's going to get worse. Still, we Christians should be the happiest people on earth we should be the most peaceful people on earth how are we going to accomplish this by staying in the word amen and doing what he tells us to do amen psalms 150 says this praise the lord praise ye the lord daily let him rise up amen and uh nehemiah 8 and 10 says the joy of the lord is our strength do you need some strength but let the joy of god show <laughs> some people need to see it It'll make some people glad, some people will get mad because they want to know why you're so happy, so many negative things happening. Then you can share the word of God with them. You know why I have peace in me? Because the greater one is in me. And he can be in you also. But you got to let him in. Amen. Quit shutting the doors. He says he's not going to come in, but you won't let him in. So the problem is not on his end. The problem's on our end. We need to fix it. How do I fix it? Well, you got to open up and let God in your life. Amen. He wants to come in, but you're not letting him in. <laughs> First Peter 5, 7 says, and here it is. You can write these down. You can go check them out yourself. The Amplified says, cast all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns once and for all on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. He don't want you to lose, and he don't want to lose you. Amen. He wants you to succeed. He wants you to be triumphant. Amen. We need to see ourselves the way he sees us. Important. Champions. Winners. Not losers. You know, this is some mindsets of the world. You know, they, they see you down and out. They see you losing. And they like those. Don't see yourself that way. It's time to get away from that and start thinking. And believe in what the word of God says about you. First Peter 5, 7 says, Give all your all your worries, all your anxieties, all your cares, all your problems. Well, maybe some of you don't have any of these, but uh, I, I mean, I do, but uh, I just want to give it to you, Lord. Give it to him, because why? Because he cares for you. So don't ever say, God don't care about me. All these things happening to me, and God doesn't care. These things may be happening to you, because maybe you're not in fellowship with him. Maybe you're just walking away from it. Amen. Maybe you're just being part-time. He wants 
full custody, not just part custody. <laughs> he wants us totally surrender to him. Amen. You know, when Jesus surrendered himself, he went to the cross and he was sacrificed. That's a total surrender. You got to give yourself totally to him, not just part time, you know. No, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God has given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Don't let your authority, your power go to waste. Okay? Use it. Don't be weak. Don't be defeated. Christians, you have the greater one in you. You have all the power needed in you. Don't live a defeated, wimpy, comfy life. Amen? You have to do something about this. I mean, this is this is very important. Amen. Don't be defeated. You know what to do, and you got the word in you, and you're not speaking it out. What happened? Something wrong here. It says participate and not spectate. Too many of us are spectators. That means we just look and we judge and say they're not doing it right. They should be doing this way, and they should be doing that way. You know? No, he wants us to participate. When you participate, you learn. And you do it his way. Amen. Hebrews 5, 13, 5 and 6 says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. If his word if his word says it, then he's always with you. So if you're feeling lonely, that's because on your end, you're not opening up to him and spending time with him. Because if you're spending time with him, you're not going to feel lonely anymore. Okay. Lord, I, I need your help. I need help. Yeah, he knows. And he's going to be with you. But he's not going to forget about you. What things you're going through. What storms of life you're going through. What problems you're going through. God is with you. So, verse 6 says, So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Huh? Yes. I mean, it's right there. We sang this song a few minutes ago. It says, uh, let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Three times. Let God arise, let go, let God, let God, let God arise. Amen. We got to let him do this on a daily basis in our lives. I can't say it enough. You need to mark that down somewhere where you can see it all the time. Let God arise. Basically, is stir yourself up. Stay hungry for God. Stay focused for God on a daily basis and do for him. Amen. It's a great song, but, you know, some churches are just doing away with some of these songs. It's a great, great song. Amen. So it will be a good marching song for our church. The body of Christ goes against the power of darkness. Amen. It's a, it's a, it's a triumph song. It's a good song. Woo. Hallelujah. Where are we? Okay, keep going. Okay. Yeah, we, we just went through all them. Ephesians 6 and 12. You find Ephesians 6 and 12. There we go. And this is what we need to do on a daily basis. Know this. Okay? Your enemy is not your neighbor. Your enemy is not <laughs> your friend. Amen? Your enemy is this. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen? But against principalities, against powers. Against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, is a spiritual battle. That's why it's so important that we get the word in in us. Amen. Get the word of God in us, so we can start using the word and using the authority God has given us. Otherwise, we're just fighting a physical battle, you know, with people, and it's not people that's our problem. This is our problem right here. We're talking about. Against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we need God, we need His Word in us. Amen. That's the only way to bring it down. Ooh, God, we got to storm the gates of hell. Amen. Let the devil's strongholds fall and tumble and collapse. Amen. Let God's people, the body of Christ, win spiritual victories on a daily basis. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, that we can do all these things. As we take and use our authority. You know, we're always looking for somebody else to do it. But God has called every one of us to do this. And we can do it. 
Can you do all things through Christ? Yes, that's what the Word of God says. So I can do it. We don't have to point at nobody else. Let God arise. When we do these things, we'll come alive and the church will begin to press on and go forward. Church, that's us. The body of Christ. Not somebody else. Not Like I said, not this building. We must break out of our spiritual rut. Amen. And listen to this. <laughs> I think we have to do things the same way and experience God's ways the same way all the time. Away with the powerless conditions. This is a way it's always been done. And you hear a lot of people say that. It's always been done this way. So we just don't continue this way. I'm not doing that because it's always been like this. And you know, we have traditions. We have mindsets. Your mindset is set of beliefs, attitudes that shape how you make sense to the world and yourself. It influences how you think, feel, and behave in any given situation. Listen, I'll just give you a couple of them. Some fixed mindsets. Either I'm good at it or I'm not. Your, your uh, mature uh, uh, growth uh, mindset says, I can do and learn any all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's a big change. It says, I don't have the abilities. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now we're changing. We're changing the mindset. The job is totally out of my league. I can't do that. Well, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You. Remember, I can. That's you. Put your name there. I can do. So I don't have to fall for those things anymore. Don't stop. You can stop believing those things and start believing what the Word of God says about you. As God's people, we need to understand that God is a God of diversity, different ways. He isn't controlled by traditions, habits, same ways, always been this way. He doesn't always manifest himself in his uh, himself or his powers in the same uh, same way every time. Amen. Uh, healing. He was, he healed people. He said them. Some he spoke to. Some he touched. Some he rubbed. Some he spit at. But that's God. <laughs> and he did it and got the same results. They were healed. Amen. So we don't fall into the traditions about it. it's always like this. Amen. It's different. We build spiritual ruts in our Christian walks. And when we put limitations on God that will require Him to operate in boundaries, then how we think things should be done in church. We don't want to put no limits on God. It's limitless. Amen? But when we let religion step in, religion put limits on God. You know, we can't, we can't allow that. We don't allow that here. We can't do this. It's got to be man's way and not God's way. So, we, can, we, we got to refuse that. We refuse, and you can refuse to operate that way. Amen? 1 Samuel 13 and 14 says this, But God, he says, But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded to you. He's describing David. He says he described David as a man after his heart. We can do this on a daily basis. Lord, I'm seeking you on a daily basis. I'm seeking God. Amen. I'm seeking him. And David was great. No enemies ever succeeded over him. He rose from nothing. He rose from nothing. Okay. And that's the way. Remember when the prophet came to the pit? says, you go to Jesse's house. He told the prophet. God told him. And you're going to the next king of Israel is coming from Jesse's house. And the sons went through, you know, all seven of them went through. And the prophet says, nope, 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 nope. He says, do you have another son? Oh, yeah. He's out in the field. He's just a little uh, shepherd boy. That's what the world says about us. Oh, he's just, she's just a little nobody, you know. He's just a little shepherd boy out there watching the, the sheep. And that's how people see you. That's how the world sees you. So you need to forget about that and start seeing yourself the way God sees you. He said, oh, you little shepherd boy. 
And so he said, well, bring him here, you know. So he brought him. He passed in front of the prophet. God says, that's him. He went from a nobody, little shepherd boy, to the king of Israel. That's how God saw you, you know. You're down and out. And the world saw you down and out. A nobody. But God chose you to be who you are. And then important, valuable to the body of Christ. Amen. When you see it yourself this way and the way God sees you, you can't allow people to put you down. And see yourself the way he sees you and and, and and not put you down anymore. I'm a somebody. So I won't ever say that about yourself. Christ gave his life for you. And he paid a price he didn't owe. And you owe a debt you cannot pay. He owns you. So don't go around saying, I'm nobody. You're somebody very special. See yourself this way as you go out and do for him and serve him on a daily basis. You're somebody real special. That little shepherd boy was a nobody until he came and passed in front of uh, the shepherd, uh, the prophet. And the prophet says, that's, that's the next king of Israel. But you know what? You passed before God. And when you start reading the word and what the word of God says about you, you see yourself important because you are to him your vital he's the head and we're the body and this body's got to be busy about our father's business so don't let be a god pleaser not a people pleaser because you ain't never going to please people and they're always going to talk about you anyway and they're going to try to put you down disqualify you from anything you try to try to do but he rose from nothing from a shepherd boy to becoming the greatest king of israel we can also rise and roar with eagles and not scratch with chickens anymore. Amen. Like David, you can do the same. Overcome your enemies. Know whose you are and who you are in him. Know that you can do all things through Christ. Big or small, do it unto him. Amen. God is pleased. He rewards and promotes us. Amen. Listen, Psalms 37, 23 says, The steps of a good man, a good woman, <laughs> are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. I'm going to do my best for you, Lord, and you know what he's going to do? He's going to promote you to bigger and better things. He's going to bless you and reward you. That's what the Word of God says. So don't put yourself down and out. See yourself going up and up with him. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Proverbs 3 and 5. I'm just going to read you a few more and we'll be closing. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says this. King James, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understandings. In all your ways acknowledge him and he's going to direct your path. He's got a path for you. He's got a mission for you. He's got a call for you. Amen. And he's anointed you. He's qualified you. And he's gifted you and equipped you to do all these things and be successful. Amen. If you're seeing yourself different, it's time you line up with what or the way he wants you to see yourself amen and proverbs 16 and 3 says this commit your works commit thy works unto the lord and thy thoughts shall be established just commit yourself on a daily basis to him as you walk with him amen and let him arise on a daily basis with him amen mm -hmm. hallelujah did you receive anything yes <laughs> praise god in closing <laughs> Says the individual or church uh, body that wants to experience a fresh move of God has got to be willing to say, let God arise. Amen. Let, and, and then allow him to do so. If we're going to let God arise, let him do so. Amen. Let go and let God, church. Quit trying to hold him down. Quit trying to put him down. Stop trying to put limits on him. Let him rise. Let him rise up. Amen. God's nature is to rise up. So let God arise in your life and over your circumstances. And this is what he wants us to do. Press on. Press on means, press on means move on. Move forward, not backwards. Amen. We're going to press on with him on a daily basis. Amen. And the Bible says, again, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. Did you receive? Yes. <laughs> I receive for me. You receive for yourself because you know you again you you got to see yourself the way he sees you and he made you to succeed and not fail he made you to win and not lose 
when you see this, you know, you stop comparing yourself with the things of the world and the way the world wants you to do. See yourself the way God wants you to be. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Some of you are watching, some of you are listening. Uh, you're still down and out, and you're still uh, running from God. It's time that you come to God, amen. It's time that you say, Lord, I've sinned against you. I've been coming in my life, be my Lord and Savior. And you will, amen. And all you need to do is just line up with the Word of God, get into a Bible-based church where you can learn the Word of God, amen. And there's people around you that are going to encourage you and support you, amen. Get you a Bible where you can open it up and start reading and getting the word in you so you can start speaking that word. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. If you got uh, hurts in your body, uh, healings in your body, you need, the Bible says, by Jesus Christ, you're healed. Amen. So know that you are healed from head to toes. Amen. And that's what the word of God says. Jesus took the stripes on the cross so that we can be healed. Amen. So, Father, I receive my healing right now. And body, line up with the word of God and receive your healing now. I receive my healing. So you receive your healing according to the word of God. Amen. So praise God. Thank you, Lord. And time to give. Thank you, Lord. Those of you watching, listening, you like to give, you type. All you have to do is go to our website. It should be on the screen, NBCBigBen.com. Hit the donate button. Uh, if you're mailing it, NBC PO Box 252, Marco, Texas, 79843. And uh, now you can do Cash App, which uh, you can go to uh, New Beginnings Church of the Big Ben. Amen. So God loves you. We love you. Have a blessed day. Amen. Praise God. Yeah.